I started the company back in 2014. I was um, pregnant at the time with my daughter. She's now six. Um, and it was really just out of a need. I made one for myself and just, I was looking for a MacBook case at the time, couldn't find one that I was particularly, you know, interested in. So I ended up, I bought a clear case off of Etsy, not off of Etsy, off of eBay. Um, used glitter and just kind of designed it myself, posted it on Instagram, and um, the case was born. And then from that, it just kind of like, you know, spiraled into what it is today, which is, a, you know, a tech accessories brand that um, we mainly focus on MacBook cases because that's kind of our bread and butter, but sometimes we sneak in other things like sleeves and phone cases and things like that. Right, and I saw that, but we're going to get into that shortly because I want to get into the whole design of it. Now, how you got into doing that? Designing the case? Yes. Yeah, I, it was just a kind of a fluke. Like I said, I, I made it one on my own. I'm pretty crafty in general. Like I love to do interior design. I love to like make things. And so and I've always been that way since I was a kid. Um, and so when it came to needing a case, I was like, oh, I don't really like anything out there. I'm just going to make one myself. And so I made one. I posted it on Instagram and there were people who were like, oh my gosh, that's so, that's so cute. Can you please make me one? And of course, for my friends, I'm like, oh yeah, girl, like I'll make you one. Um, so I made a few for friends. I had a friend at the time who had like 100,000 followers on Instagram in 2014. That was a huge deal. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that was like five million then, right? So um, she posted for me um, and it really showed me what the brand could be. And so I was like, oh, this could, this could be a thing. So from that, um, I decided to kind of take it, take it from there and keep going. So designing just kind of just came from my own desire to make things. Um, Do you think design school played a role in that? Maybe. I know that I went to design school because of that background, because of just my desire to make things. I didn't necessarily want to be a fashion designer. I wanted to kind of be in the marketing space, so that's why I got a marketing degree. Um, actually, my goal at the time was to be a buyer for like sex fit or something like that. Um, and that was kind of the career path that I wanted to go. And then I ended up interning at a buying office and was like, eh, this is boring. So I decided that I was going to do something else. Um, but I think, yeah, the design is something that I've always had a passion for and it's cool that I can continue to, you know, support that or kind of like stroke that, I guess, um, you know, in my career now. Yes, your designs are beautiful. And then, and I'm just going to toggle a little further back to where you were a model and you appeared in many successful commercials. So, like, you just transitioned from one era <laughs> to the next. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I, I went to school. So the school that I went to, Finham, is, is based in LA. Um, my mom actually got me into modeling when I was little. Um, she got me into modeling. I did a lot of just like small local things. I'm from Arizona originally. I'm actually a military brat, and so we bounced around. Um, but I grew up mostly in Arizona. Um, and I did some things here while I was here. So when I moved to LA for school, I got signed to I was signed to LA Models and um, another smaller agency. And I was, let me, you know, really take this seriously. So I did a lot of extra work and I was featured in school campaigns like Call of Duty, which was probably the biggest national one, which was so cool. Um, and then I did a lot of other things too, like the PacSun and Converse and um, Volkswagen is one that I've done. And yeah, a lot of smaller things too, but. That was, that was, again, something that I started when I was really young and just kept doing. <laughs> and you appeared next to Kobe Bryant. Did you meet him? Like what, how did that inspire you? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is literally every single time someone asked me about that commercial, they're like, did you meet Kobe Bryant? <laughs> That's the first question. <laughs> and I get it, but unfortunately I did not get to meet him. He oh. shot on a different day. I know, I'm like, I missed my chance. <laughs> but no, I shot on a different day, um, so I, I didn't get to meet him. Or Jimmy Kimmel, he was also in the commercial. Um, but I didn't get to meet either of them. Hey, but it you so cool. <laughs> you're all in the same commercial, so it's still cool, right? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Health spirit, you know.
knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> your your good luck charm. <laughs> so um, when you when you launched the first Mac Pad, uh, how long? You said you just brought a few things and pieced some things together. Basically, how long did it take you to create it? And then you did everything by hand afterwards. Yeah. So I start, I made it like same day like I, I ordered the case online it got to me in a few days and then I went to Michael's and bought just like some you know craft materials to make the case um, mm -hmm. and after that I continued to hand make them because that was the only way that I knew how to do it I had never even though I went to school for fashion and I actually took a product development class in in school mm -hmm. I never really applied it and so when the time came it was very new to me and so um, yeah for the first year and a half two years we handmade like the majority yeah. of our cases and I had when I tell you it was like <laughs> everybody that came to our house left with a little piece of glitter somewhere on them <laughs> and I'm sure they were like <laughs> PTSD <laughs> coming over PTSD. <laughs> And my daughter, she was born in December of that year, so she also was always covered in glitter. I'm like, why is she have some glitter on her? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we handmade those pieces. When I say we, like my boyfriend was helping me, I would have friends come over and I'm like, you glitter, I'm gonna glue. Like we would have a whole little like assembly line going. So we had so many orders and everything was handmade and made to order. And I'm like, I have to get these out now. Um, and so we just, we just worked it out. Wow, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of cases. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I was saying it, it was definitely a lot. Oh God! So if you could put a number on it, when you were getting your orders, how high was that demand? Oh, it was like 200, 300 orders a month. Oh like my God. There were, it was a lot. I mean, we were getting them. Yeah, we were hand making that amount every single time. It was, it was crazy and so from that I was like we need to find a solution <laughs> yeah. um, and that started on my journey to find a manufacturer but that was again just completely new territory and so I was very nervous and dealing with someone that was overseas that I couldn't talk to or meet in person and like feel their energy I was scared to send that first you know <laughs> wire transfer but right. it, it all worked out would you say that's your, if you could go back and tell your younger entrepreneurial self anything that would be the first thing is to find someone else to help you create this product yeah because I feel like that's probably the reason why and I'm sure we'll get into this why clothes at one point because everything just became so like I was spending so much of my time like with my hands on the product right I couldn't I didn't have the bandwidth to do on the gels, like customer service and all those things I was doing my best, but it was, you know, some things would take a long time, and, you know, but I think, yeah, I would definitely try to find people who do this, <laughs> um, you know, and yeah, find professionals in their field in general, not just with product development, but even when it came to like accounting and other things, yeah, in the beginning, get those things set up because it just helps you later down the line to have it together. Would you consider that the good, the bad, and the ugly of being an entrepreneur? I would, even though it was hard, I would say the good because it, I, I learned so much from it, you know? Mm -hmm. What would you consider the bad? Um, the bad was probably just the, I think it was the combination of everything all at once, like the overwhelm, the, the, the trying to wear the 50 hats all while being a new mom. And, you know, it wasn't the work itself. It was the sheer amount of work and how I just didn't have the resources or didn't know what to do or how to allocate my time um, properly, you know, it was it was just a lot all at once and I just didn't know how to manage it. So from then until the pandemic, when did you, so you stopped for uh, a short time and then relaunched. What was that like? Yeah. Yeah. So I stepped back, um, actually we closed 2019, um, in January, we sold everything. We sold through all of our stock. I closed the doors. I was like, I need a minute to regroup. I wasn't sure if we were going to come back. I just didn't really have any idea. I just knew that I needed to stop for a second. 
Um, and so I did that. And I decided, I'm like, is this something that I really want to do? Is, is entrepreneurship for me? Um, you know, I think a lot about like who I am as a person and how I want to operate in the world. And I'm like, does entrepreneurship serve that? And like, am I, want, am I wanting something just because it kind of happened for me, but is it really what I want, you know? Right. Um, and so in thinking through all of that and the life that I wanted to create for myself, I decided that entrepreneurship is for me and I just need to figure out how to make it work for me my way. Um, and so I decided to, you know, pick myself back up a little bit and figure it out and keep going. And so I um, created a new collection. It was the Neon Collection. Neons were like pretty big, 2019 summer. <laughs> um, so we did Neon Glitter and we relaunched. And from then we just kind of been keep, you know, we just kept going, kept going, kept going. And it's just been, it's still definitely a, a ride. You know, it's still a lot of work. Um, and I don't think I have even today, all of my systems 100% in order, like the way that I would love them to be. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that I've been able to pick myself back up, the fact that, you know, I'm clearer on what the goal is now um, makes all the difference. Okay, I love it. And then the balance with motherhood. How is that? Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> um, that is, that's always a challenge. I feel like there's that, you know, that mommy guilt that comes in and, you know, splitting my time. But again, my daughter was, um, she was just born while I was kind of like just working this company too, right? It's kind of like they were born by twins. <laughs> um, and, and at the time, uh, I, I was a new mom, so I was very, very, with that too but now that I, I'm a new mom again because I have another one he's a baby he's eight months now um I understand like I understand what's important and what's not you know as a mom and as a business owner there's so many things there's so many things to do right like there's just you can have a mile long to-do list but just prioritizing has been huge for me because it's easy for me now to say that can wait you know right and I think that was one of my questions. Is no a big part of your everyday process? The word no. Yeah, I love no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say no. I feel like I can't, you know, and I always say, I'm like, they always say you can't give from an empty cup or can't pour from an empty cup, right? right. As a mom, you can. <laughs> there are days I swear I am like depleted. I have zero left and somehow, there are still like drops somewhere to give, right? And so, but I, those days, they just, they they spill over. Um, and so I know like, okay, I would love to do that or I would, you know, love to get this done, but now is not the time. And my kids, like they, sitting in the bed, watching TV and just like being in my space, I've learned that that's also enough. Like my quality time is enough for them. And even though in my mind, I wanna go to the pool and I wanna go take them here and there, all these cool things, it's like, they don't really care or even know the difference. They just want to be near. Right. Um, knowing that, that helps to kind of balance it out a little bit too. Are you full time? Yeah, so I currently, like yeah. I have, so I actually have a, a, a company that I work for um, and I, since I've come back, I've been scared to step away because obviously there's, you know, that doubt of, um, and not working out fully, but um, so right now I am, I'm splitting my time. I'm, I work full time, I have my company full time, and I'm a mom. Wow, that is a lot, <laughs> a lot. Kudos to you, because you're like running a six figure company. Like yes. a crown, you deserve a crown with glitter on it. <laughs> Thank you. That is, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, but it's, it feels good. When you stepped away the first time, or just the only time, did you ever consider somebody might steal my idea? Like, did, was that ever a concern of yours? Because your design is pretty unique. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had people steal my idea. It's wow. just funny because like this one particular case, it was a picture actually, and it went almost viral on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And I've had people like sneakily ask me like, as a customer, like, hey, um, I'm really allergic to um, this type of, you know, whatever, what materials are used in the making of your product? Things like that. They would ask me questions that I'm, I clearly know they're trying to understand how I make the product and how I use the sealant. Mm -hmm. This was when I was hand making them. 
Um, and so I knew, you know, and I've also had people who have purchased from me before and then gone on to start, you know, very similar businesses. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, but I, I get it, you know, it's a, it's a cool product. They're great. And they sold and they, you know, if someone's going to steal the idea, then hats off to them. But, you know, again, that's another lesson I've learned to just stay in my own lane and not focus on what everyone else is doing because I don't know their story. And frankly, it's none of my business. I love that. And I love your product. You know, when I went in and uh, watched the reviews, like that is like bomb that you have live reviews by the way so the thing that sets you aside from even the, the 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 apple and all of the other products that's out there is you have a twofold product especially for your um, computer cases and mat cases where some of them just have the top covers yours has a bottom cover so that's crazy like how did you think of that it's just personal use, you know? I'm like, what do I want? And that's what I try to make for other people. I know that I would want it in a certain way and you just, you know, do that same thing for other people. That's the, that's how it started. And I think that that's how I'll probably always continue. I'll make for me first or my idea of what I love and then share it with our customers. When you made your, um, your uh, Mac uh, covers and your laptop covers, you have a variety, so how did you get the measurements that they fit perfectly? Gosh, yeah, that's a, yeah. So um, Apple has like a standard um, process for how they do all of their MacBooks, and so there's a bunch of different sizes. There's actually eight currently that are like still sold in the market, um, but they are standard. So as long as you have, you can buy a MacBook as a 13-inch Pro. For instance, um, our 13-inch Pros will fit your MacBook. And that's the reason why actually we don't do any other computer outside of MacBook because there are so many variations right. that we would just get, you know, buried in the like inventory. Um, and so, yeah, we streamline it because, uh, you know, Apple's a, a pretty popular um, model of computer mm -hmm. laptop and it's we can streamline the inventory just based on the fact that they have those standard sizes. That's awesome. Um, so another question about your lessons learned. What would be the top lesson that you learned within the pandemic? In the pandemic, um, I think get to know yourself. I think that so often we are, and I obviously can't speak for everyone, but just the way it seems being on social media, it's like you have to show up as a certain way, like as a mom. I always say that we like assume roles, right? As we go through life, we assume a role as a mom or we assume a role as a partner, you know, in a relationship or we assume a role as an employee or whatever it is. And you just like take it on without ever really realizing or taking the time to sit with what that means to show up in that space. Mm -hmm. And so I think that taking a step back and figuring out do I want to be in this space? <laughs> and how do I want to operate in this space? And what makes me happiest in this space? And then, you know, like peeling back the layers of it so that you can understand every day that you've chosen to show up, you know, as a mom this way or as an employee this way or as a CEO this way. Um, so I think taking the time to self-reflect, I think has been huge for me during this pandemic, um, both for personally and the way that I operate in my business. And business boom for you during the pandemic, right? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because we thought that we were going to, you know, everyone was going to be holding on to their coins and, <laughs> and no one was going to be shopping. But we, like, since we launched um, in well, August 2019, well, since we relaunched, March, which was the day, which was the month that everything really just kind of fell, you know, the world seemed like it fell apart. That was our best month since not relaunching and so it's crazy that that would be the case and so that again it like fueled my fire to just like okay keep going keep going and build that momentum and keep, keep you know growing so and we just haven't stopped you've been featured in so many magazines and online publications especially like fashion bomb daily like did you get overwhelmed just from being in the spotlight um, no, I don't 
think that, and, I, and my, it's funny because I don't think that we've actually been featured that often. Um, I mean, Fashion Bomb Daily was really cool and we love it. And I love anytime that there's recognition, obviously, because it's, it's validating. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that overwhelms me by, by any means. I think that, that you mean like our sales or me personally or like, your sales, you- like, because that's going to drive more people to your page that's gonna add more commotion every time your name is out there as just you know one of those starlit people so um the cool thing about the way that our like back end is set up is we can produce product really quickly so even when we have you know moments of press or like cool things happen that really spike sales we can get that inventory to support that sale very fast. And so that's one of the, it's a blessing that we are set up that way um, because I don't really have to miss out, you know, on things because we can pull it together. Okay. And then, then this is my last question. (laughs) So you're safe. Yay. Um, (laughs) The accessories that you have on your site now is solely for which products? Currently just Mac. All the sizes. Um, so there are a few sizes that we no longer sell, just because they're most people no longer have them. Um, but just MacBook, and we do have sleeves um, that you can put your any computer inside of. It's just like a zipper sleeve, um, so you can use it for really any MacBook. And some people even use it for like documents or journals or just as like a little pouch to carry with them. Um, but for the most part, MacBook. And where can people find, I know where they can find them, but where can they find (laughs) your wonderful product and follow you on uh, social media? Yeah, so you can shop at our website. It's just www.embryshop.com. And on Instagram and pretty much everywhere else, we are Embry Shop. And Embry is E-M-B-R-I-S-H-O-P. Okay, and then here's my last question. I'm serious this time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what next for you? Um, just continuing to grow the business. I think that um, eventually, you know, I do want to quit my full-time job and move on to do this full-time again. If that is, you know, it obviously would need to support, you know, I would need to replace my income fully and more to really step away. Um, so that would be the goal. That's currently the goal. I'm not trying to look too far ahead. We just want to focus on that, continuing to grow our community and, um, offer you know new products to our community that we already have and continue to grow.